How you doing, everybody? Welcome back. Today, I'm going to make a drill point gauge. Uh, why am I going to make a drill point gauge when I can pick one up for about 10 bucks? Well, quite simply, I want to make one. And uh, I'm going to learn something in the process. But primarily, I need one because one of the most important tools in my shop are drill bits. And I've taken the time to learn how to sharpen drill bits. Uh, but to do a good job, you really need one of these gauges, especially if you're going to do it by hand. Uh, it, takes a, it takes practice, but having the tool to uh, compare to is very handy. So I'm going to make one today. Um, so I picked up this uh, plan from That Lazy Machinist. I suggest you do the same thing if you want to go ahead and make this uh, tool. And uh, essentially you just need a piece of steel, you know, an eighth of an inch thick by a couple inches tall and, and about five inches long to start with. And, uh, and so we're gonna learn a couple of things here. One, not to produce all these features first so that we could keep our references, our nice straight references, right? So don't forget about that. Don't start getting all fancy at first. We're going to have a 59 degree angle to uh, draw and whatnot. So, uh, you know, and we're going to need to make the graduations, which is something I've never done. So that should be fun. Let's go and try that. Okay, so to uh, set up for this project, I'm going to first start with a scribe line that's going to go horizontal on this piece at one inch. So I'm gonna scribe that all the way. And, uh, okay, so we've got that. Now, in the plan it says, la 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 la, la from this point here to this F mark, is three and three eighths. So let's put that into the gauge. Okay. So in my case, I know that these two references are straight and square. I've already checked with the machine is square. So I'm gonna do it like this. Scribe at three and three eighths. So that'll be where my angle is going to roll from in this direction. Now I'm going to draw my angle. So let me set up to do that. And to draw this angle, I've got this universal blah, blah, blah angle something. Okay. And like I said, my reference marks are here. There we go. Now I know where to go from because that's that center mark we just did. Cross. There we go. Just gonna extend that a short bit. Reset. And just might as well scribe it all the way. All right. Let me show you the marks. Here they are. Okay, so now what we need to do is cut. All right, so what I've decided to do is use my bandsaw and uh, cut it until I reach about that point. I'm gonna stop it manually and we'll go, uh, and then we'll switch that around. <laughs> Gotta be cautious when you do this. Always take safety precautions. You know, and don't put your fingers near the blade.
So now we're at the point we have our basic shape, right? And I didn't go too close to the line. It's close enough to allow me to, to finish it correct. Okay, so what does it say here? Plan calls for all services to be finished by draw filing. So as you can tell, like you don't have to go too crazy on this thing. I think the only important part is to get your angle correct, right? 59 degrees. And so this will be good for drill bits with a 118 degree um, cutting angle. So now, I guess it's time to put some hand power to this and file the rest. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, so I've filed my drill point gauge. <laughs> and uh, what I've done is uh, taken my universal bevel protractor and verified the angles. Uh, the next step is going to simply be to mark our scale. But first, before you get started, uh, there's a couple of things that you need to take into consideration. Uh, first of all, let's just stand up so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. You need to set up some marks here to know where to start. Best way to do that is take a straight edge and then make a little mark here. And then put your edge on the other side, you know, like a square, and then find the edge of the first mark you made and then scribe your line. So your square is gonna give you that perfect angle. And then this will be where we start our lines. One, two, three, etc. Now, the diagram that Mark has provided, if you see here, okay, so actually each line is 116. So, so I'm gonna set up the machine and uh, show you how I'm going to put this in my vise in order to get the job done. Here we go. A uh, couple of things. Number one, I had to make myself a tool. So you know what, the irony of it all, I actually grabbed a 3-8 bit flattened one side, made it all nice and sharp, and that's what's gonna scribe my lines. Okay, the other things, I don't have any of those fancy clamps yet. Gotta make those. So I clamp my drill point gauge on a piece of stock, and I use the parallel, so it doesn't look straight, but it is straight. Um, so now, what I've done is I've zeroed out, I've got a, one of those fancy digital readouts, so I've zeroed out everything, so I'm gonna go down, you know, two, three thousandths of an inch kind of deal to scribe the line. So what are the measurements? Uh, the measurements are, okay, we're making lines that are gonna be one sixteenth apart. So that's zero, six, two, five. And so on the X axis, left to right, that, that'll be the difference each time. Then, uh, to the, the each line, okay, the, the long lines, so the eighth of an inch, are going to be five thirty seconds, and that is point one five six two five, and then every other one's going to be short, and that's zero nine three seven five. Okay, so that's our first line to make. This one will be uh, so we're right at the apex here, and. Uh, that line needs to be 530 seconds, which is 0 0.15625. So I'm gonna drag this. I've already set it down about five thousandths of an inch. And I gotta drag this back and see what happens here. And things aren't moving. All right, so I'm gone too deep. That's fine, learning process. Okay. We'll go two thousandths of an inch, see what happens. That's still too deep. There's too much flex in my setup. All right. Time for uh, to redesign. Okay, so I've uh, cut my bit by a couple inches, so there's not as much flex. And, uh, and 
I've tried and it works. So let me show you. I've got it down five thousandths deep, you know, and I managed to get it. So I'm going to set it down and I'll call it another three thousandths, four thousandths, see what happens here. And it seems to dig in just fine. Alright, so that's good. So what I've been doing as a tryout is to simply go by um, three thousandths at a time. So overall here, I've got nine thousandths deep and it looks pretty good. And just feel that with a scribe. Yeah, that's plenty deep. So nine thousandths of an inch it is. So now it's a matter for me to continue and uh, scribe all those lines. I just never, did, I've never done this, so I, I, I sort of had to improvise how I was going to do it. And this seems to be a, a good way to do it. So if you don't have a digital readout, simply use your uh, the dials on your mill, and it'll work just fine. Okay, so I finished engraving those lines. And I'd say it took me about an hour to do just that, which is exactly one inch. Um, you know, basically you're scribing three times each line to get the proper depth, um, moving the carriages, blah, blah, blah. And as you notice, I now have two clamps on my setup. That's because um, as I got further and further, this step was got pushed so I had to reset it and uh, and then continue with two clamps so things to look out for I mean yeah it's it's cool it's just you know another thing that I've learned in my thinking cap here but uh, honestly <laughs> it's 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 kind of tedious um, but still glad I'm doing it and I uh, will do it again no doubt um, and uh, you know if you've never tried this uh, give it a whirl uh, essentially, the uh, tool bit itself. Not sure if you can see that. Let me zoom back out a touch, and we'll zoom in on the actual tool that I made. Just a drill bit with a flat. So this is actually flat here, and um, with a point. Now you can see it a little bit better with a point. Now this is high-speed steel, so in mild steel, it works perfectly fine. Something to, uh, you know, expand her horizons as uh, uh, hobby machinists, and I'm just beginning. So for me, it's a learning experience and lots of fun. All right, let's uh, take this out and see what else we need to do. Okay, by the way, I just uh, noticed myself saying, what do we have to do? That drives me completely bananas, so um, I apologize for that. Um, if you're following along with me and making one of these, then that's what we have to do. But uh, I'm doing it by myself, so therefore I shouldn't be saying that. In any case, um, I've cleaned that up because I wanted to see how the marks are showing up. And that's not too bad for my first attempt. You could actually stop right here and use this tool. It's usable. But of course, I want to have some fun, so I'm going to continue. And uh, what I've done is I've uh, looked at the schematics. It says the radius here is one inch and one eighth, right? So from here to here, there's your radius, which is half the, uh, the distance of a diameter. So you can set a compass of this. And I did, pardon me, with sadly only lead pencil, but you can see the mark right here. So I'm going to take this to the bandsaw and chop that up and then take it to uh, my belt sander and finish the circle part of that. So that's what I'm going to do now. All right, it's time to cut some metal. Here we go.
Let's use the belt sander. See if we can do some damage. Okay, time to do a little bit of deburring and then I'm going to get totally an old retentive and uh, I'm going to sand this, yeah. And I'm going to do that before I get crazy with the paint and stuff. So um, here I made my corners, see that, I look at this here. And uh, after I used the actual belt sander, I used the, uh, the disc sander part of the belt sander and, uh, and just finished up the radius or the <laughs> circumference. And uh, does a much better job, of course, because you've got that little table to, uh, to lean against. I'm retired, so I got plenty of time to do this stuff. Time is not an issue for me. And uh, it's not about cost as much as it is about learning. So if you're new to this stuff and you're retired, let's make up, make your own stuff. Don't have to buy everything. I mean, there's things you need to buy, like, you know, test indicators and stuff like that, of course, but. The rest of the stuff you can make. And this is just a fun little project here. So essentially this is done. Like if you don't want to go any further with your tool, it's it's done. Let's just get a drill bit here and check it out. Okay, so I've got a 15, 30 second bits that I took out of my box there. And uh, this is basically what you've got. No? Let's see if we can get that to show. There you are. So if you're working on a 118 degree bit, this is what you're gonna get. It's nice and straight. And uh, so what happens is that when you grind one side, you can come back, turn the bit over to the other side and see if you've got the same distance this way and uh, keep it even because that's pretty important you gotta have that point right in the middle all righty folks i've done my thing sanded it all down lapping whatever you want to call it it's sanded brought it down to uh, 600 grit and uh this is my result so i'm pretty happy with this and now i have a working gauge for my bits so um, go ahead and make one of these puppies and eh, you don't need you don't need to spend the $11 as much as you need to learn have some fun so go for it thanks Mark Lecvier from that lazy machinist and uh, to all the other people that inspired me on YouTube take care folks bye bye